Alright, so this is the feeding system of the MS-700. This is a little tube that they keep going on and on and on about. So what actually happens is you got 78 rounds in the mag, you put the mag in, you depress this little latch here, which um, opens up the tube here. All the BBs from the magazine get fed into this tube all the way up here, and here they go into the rifle. Um, this is where your cylinder head and your hop-up chamber are located, are made it. So if you don't have enough rounds in the magazine, it doesn't fill this up completely and the magazine can't push on all these BBs pushing them into the chamber. Um, so that's a bit of a fail creation that you when when the mag is empty eventually you still have all these BBs left all of those because when when you fully loaded up the mag you put it in fills up this rail you take it back out, you reload the magazine again, put it back in, and then you start shooting, you'll have a lot of rounds to shoot. At some point, you're gonna run dry, and then this whole rail will still be filled with BB. So I'm thinking about, um, I'm gonna count this later, I'll put it at the bottom here somewhere. How many BBs go into this rail is how many shots you still have left, actually, when you run dry. Just tilt the barrel to the ground, so let gravity roll them into the hop-up chamber. Um, that way you still have a few rounds left. Um, you still need to keep an empty magazine in there because on the other side of this you have this little latch. And when you insert the magazine see how that moves? This is an, this disengages a safety so right now you can't pull the trigger, but if you push this in, you can, see, cannot, can. And that's a safety that you cannot fire without a magazine in. And if you undo these two screws, you can take that plate off and you can always fire um, with a magazine in. Out, excuse me. Right, so the barrel end of the MS-700. It does come off um, clockwise, but it doesn't reveal a 14mm thread. It's a lot bigger, so suppressors don't readily fit on this end. However, this over here looks to be threading of some sorts, and this looks like it could, um, in the future, accept a um, MS-700 specific quick detach suppressor. So let's hope for that. The rail guard is a magnificent matte black finish and the cool thing about these rails is that you can take out these two screws on both the side and bottom rails, those three, and there's a lot of holes in here even at 45 degree angles which are all been threaded so you can move this and put it here or up here or down there if you want. On the bottom you can only put in one, there's not enough holes to put two next to each other. But this way you can um, for instance get a flashlight at a 45 degree angle or an extra red dot side or you can get um, your bipod on the front, put it a bit more towards the rear. You can play around with this, it's very modular as the um, MSR should be and is uh, also 45 degree angle downwards, up, left, right, um, bottom rail, top rail, <laughs> obviously not because that's a monolithic giant rail about the size of Canada um, goes from the back of the receiver all the way up to the front of the rail guard um, so yeah it's pretty pretty interesting and very modular also here in front you've got on both sides got a quick detach loophole where you can put your quick detach bungee sling or just your quick detach sling mounts in also very nice on the bottom here we have another rail um, you cannot take this off but it um, it is very good for like foregrips or 
perhaps another bipod if you like the bipod to be close to your hands um, you could put the rail cover on there to have a nice grip on there really nice so that's that's the front guard the only markings we find are on the right hand side of the receiver just above the magazine well and it says the Magpul logo with mid-range sniper rifle caliber 3 well you can read so that's that you have mode MSR Come on, focus baby focus doesn't want to focus there we go mode MSR 012 uh, MSR 012 means 700 black uh, MSR 013 is this uh, 700 in tan and then you, you got the 10 and the 11 which are respectively the MS338 in black and tan and then up here you still have that 20 mod 5.82 mil which is a Picatinny rail uh, pistol grip nicely rubber texturized very good grip provides a real aesthetic almost like an M16 grip um, said to be adjustable on Red Wolf Airsoft video, um, I believe he said loosen up this and this screw and you can move this about a bit we took it off, we inspected it, we tried everything and it's not possible, it always come back to the same position right, uh, trigger guard actually looks like it could be interchangeable with M16 styles and trigger guards I'm not sure, but this might be interchangeable with um, uh, WAM4, gas M4 pistol grips. I'm not sure about that one, but it might just be. Not that it really needs to be changed out, but whatever. Could be nice. Moving on, we have the stock, fully modular, as of course. We've got a bottom rail, which would be nice to have a monopod on there. We have two side rails on each side. Not sure what you would use that for, maybe an extra magazine holder or something. Or um, your awesome glands or something, you know. Just want to have rails everywhere. Uh, we got dials to adjust and extend the butt pad, the cheek rest. But they are held in place with grub screws, so you have to loosen these first, then you can adjust it. And you can adjust it fairly, uh, fairly much, it's quite much for a, a sniper stock then don't forget to reset that screw now if you just do that then it, it will be a bit wobbly so what you do then is you twist it a bit more so it kinda tensions up because this one's on on the bottom rail on the bottom pipe tube thing here and the grub screws on the top one so this this tensions everything up and takes the wobble away then you have this little screw here, which allows you to take the back plate and move it up and down a bit. Let's just show you that real quick. No clue why you would actually have to adjust that unless you have like... Um, well, some people might like it, but I don't think that's really a big problem for a lot of people. Uh, like I said, we have the uh, adjustable cheek piece. Um, you cannot angle it, it's just up and down, same with the stock. Then wobble wise there is quite a lot of wobble for a stock I can't really show you this with one hand but it's all in the joint here so um, perhaps if I take this apart you can see the rifle itself is not moving so that's quite a lot of quite a lot of, uh, of movement there as you can see here even more it is locked into place but there's quite some movement so not a big fan you could get some plastic card or, or make something to fit in between there to reduce that wobble because you're never gonna fold the stock in game right because you can't really use the bolt handle anymore then so it would be kinda you know kinda stupid to fold the stock in game so I think a little plastic card will be the best solution 
Um, Upgrade-wise and internal-wise, the internals seem kind of typical Ares internals, um, which means not really the best of the best. Um, they've done quite a lot of things for the exterior to look good. Um, so, typical Ares is a nice wall hanger. But for people who really want to skirm this rifle, as we do, um, internal wise upgrades are suggested. I'm not gonna say you need them. As you see on the on the Chrono, it's actually power wise it is fairly decent. Accuracy wise it's not bad either, but it could be better and it could be more reliable because that is in my opinion the biggest problem with this rifle. Reliability out of the box is gonna be not so great. I've um, I've read a review on this, so I'm I'm hoping I'll put his uh, the guy that did the review in the uh, description because that's where I got my info. Um, always credit your sources if you use someone else's info. It keeps everyone a friend. But from what I've read, um, the cylinder with every internal of the cylinder should be VSR compatible, bolt handle as well. Um, so that all, a hop up. The chamber itself is not interchangeable with VSR chambers, but the hop up rubber and the barrel should be VSR compatible. So that should be cool. Uh, should give you a lot of options for Upgrades, a lot of aftermarket parts. Trigger box, um, it kind of looks the same, but it kind of doesn't either. So don't think that that will be um, interchangeable or upgradable with, let's say, a PIV trigger. And don't think, I'm, I'm pretty sure that will not fit. But then again, the original trigger box already has a 90 degree angle, so I think that's pretty pretty sweet. Um, what I've read on that review though is that the piston is a fairly weak plastic and he had it slam firing after a few mags already. So i um, not sure if the piston is a 90 degree angle piston, but if it's if it is then and, and this trigger sear is also a 90 degree angle um, sear, then you would need to get a piston with a 90 degree angle. Somewhat like a PDI or a Lalex um, piston that are designed for VSRs with the trigger upgrade, with the, um, the V trigger or the zero trigger. <coughs> Excuse me. So that you have that 90 degree angle because VSR 10s have a 45 degree angle. Um, which makes for a lot less smooth um, cycling of the bolt, actually. The hop-up adjustment is found probably just in front of the scope and just in back of the first screw on top of the rail. It's a small little hole. You put a 1.5mm hex allen key in there and then it is really, really, really soft. You don't need to put on a lot of pressure to twist it around and adjust the hop-up. So I'm not sure if this will hold true in battle long, but then again, a 1.5mm Allen key, just put it in one of your pockets and when needed you can adjust it. Cool thing also is that when you put it in, it's going to be in front of the scope, but it will not limit your vision in any way. The scope will just look around it. So you can put this in. Take a few shots and see what the bullet does downrange, see it through the scope, and adjust it as needed. And then you're good to go again. Here we go, first shots, 0 .25, uh, 0 0.2 grams, 5 shots. 435 FPS. 435 FPS 419 FPS 
435 FPS. And a final 432 FPS. Now point two fives. We got 395 FPS. 388 402 399 and 395 now the 0.3 gram BBs which will be the BBs that we'll be using for most of the skirmishing because these are really accurate 365 356 354 372 that was a high shot and 372 and now we'll use a very heavy sniper rifle BBs by Mad Bull, the 0.43 gram ultimate heavy BBs. 291 291 310 297 and 297 So that was it